Now we've gone through the when and how to drench, pasture management, worm vaccines and genetics, but there is another really cool tool that we've got in the toolbox and one that I get quite excited about because it's probably gonna to need to be the way of the future. Natural remedies, natural things that we can give to help keep those worm burdens low without the need for drugs. There are a lot of things out there that you'll hear people talk about, some a bit weird and wonderful. We've put a breakdown for you in the ebook so you can decipher fact from fiction because a lot of them have no evidence behind them or worse, have evidence that they do nothing at all or are even harmful for your animals. But the ones that I would certainly reach for are particular crop varieties. Now these plants are what we call highly tanniniferous. Those high levels of tannins in the plants help to keep worms low naturally. So the most popular ones that grow here in New Zealand include Sulla. This is a crop that thrives in spring and winter, which is um, fantastic, has a fantastic nutritional content as well, so great for those milking does. Chicory is another. This one is drought tolerant, so it gives you feed during summer and autumn to help with the summer drought and barber's pole worm. You can grow chicory as a crop, or you can even just scatter it in with your normal pasture, which is cool. And same foin. This one is known for being very palatable, very yummy for them, and drought tolerant as well. You can even make hay out of it and it'll retain its deworming benefits. Now, particular fodder trees are another option. Absolutely many are high in tannins. The weeping willow is a personal favorite. The good thing is feeding them trees as browse also stops them from picking up worms off the pasture. So just less worms going in as well. Right now, an exciting new addition to our toolbox is a special type of fungi that you can add to the food. And those fungal spores come out in the poo where they hatch and as they're growing, they actually prey on the worm larvae in the feces. So it's very cool. It's completely harmless to your animal. It is on the market now. It's a great addition to your worm management toolbox. Finally, copper oxide wire particles are getting a big look in at the moment. They are looking promising in the research, but copper in any form does pose at least some risk of toxicity depending on your goats. So would always recommend using it with the help of a goat vet. So those are the promising tools. Definitely get on the crops and the trees, consider the fungal approach if you're willing to invest a bit more. Spoiler alert on some of the others guys, diatomaceous earth, very conflicting research with this one, which usually means that it does nothing, okay? It's unlikely to harm them at all, but certainly do not rely on it. Apple cider vinegar, this one kind of makes me laugh a little bit. Ruminants produce litres of acetate themselves, which is what's in apple cider vinegar, already sloshing around in their rumen, so your tablespoon is not gonna do a thing other than maybe burn the esophagus on the way down. No matter what you do, you do need to monitor them closely. I have dealt with many patients who have ended up euthanized, deceased, where the owner was adding, I don't know, pumpkin seeds or garlic to the water or something. Your main effort needs to be on pasture management so they are not picking them up in the first place and feed high tannin browse materials to keep them low naturally, okay? Whew, right, worms, big topic. Moving on with our quick and easy husbandry procedures. Let's cover fly strike, shearing and foot trimming, all of which are for your adults. 